Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Friday Frothy. Glenn, how are you? Great, mate. How are you? Having mm. having a bottle a week, mate, except for my back's gone again. Oh, I know. Mm. Uh, oh, you bowled okay last night. Well, I did. I did, because mm -hmm. I couldn't bend over. Oh, mate, uh, a very exciting show this evening, as we said last week. Yeah, we are. We're, uh, we're blessed to have a, uh, one of our homegrown talents, uh, one of the best. One of the best mm. going around at the moment and hopefully uh, destined for huge things in the next couple of years. Absolutely. Uh, not only did we say that we have a fantastic guest here today, but uh, normally we do our interviews over the phone and uh, today we've got him, we've he's got in him the frothy bar. Life. He's uh, in the frothy bar. The frothy bar, mate, or North Melbourne. As you well, the Roo Bar. The Roo Bar. bar. But, uh, I call it the frothy bar. Now. The Roo Bar. Yeah. So as you said, he's, uh, he's, he's homegrown. He's from here. He's from the Eastern Shore in Hobart, Tasmania. Yep. Uh, and we are so honoured to have him in the frothy bar today. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, one of the most talented up and coming racers uh, in right. Formula 3 currently in the moment, hopefully on his way to Formula 1. Welcome, Alex Perrone. Yeah, well done. Hello, Alex. How are you, mate? How are you? Yeah, How are you? Yeah, How are you? Yeah, Cheers, you are. Thank you so Thanks much for having me. me. Yeah, oh, thanks so much for kind words. words. Pleasure. Hey, what an pleasure. intro. Right? Well, yeah, we got, we pleasure, got right. mate. Get yeah, build me up. We, 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 we actually, the funny thing is, Alec, we don't need to build you up because uh, you're, doing I think it you're doing it all yourself. Yes, mate. So yes. we're just uh, we're just letting people that don't know, yep. uh, through our sports show, uh, you know, just how talented this kid is. Mm. Now we're going to get on to um, your career, all about you, what you do, and stuff. Just in a minute. But uh, I've also got your manager here, David, That's it. and uh, he told me yesterday something that absolutely startled me. And, uh, and the reason I'm saying this now yeah. is because I want people to stay, um, because Alex is doing all this racing overseas, and you don't get paid, do you? No, not yet. Not yet, not yet. But we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, we're gonna at the end of the show, we're going to go through your sponsors. We're going to go through the expenses and and how this all happens, but uh, I just want people to stay on, so, you know, people out there can help. Well, that's the thing, we're all uh, misconstrued what, what goes on with well, uh, motor car racing. That's, know that's it's hard a, work. We know it's a massive expense, but uh, now we're getting the real inside. It's hard work. So it's, very, it's gonna, very, it should be interesting for the viewers. Yeah, today so hang around, around and hopefully so. you can help out Alex on his, on his way to, yeah. uh, to greatness. So, um, yeah. anyway. Now you, you're local. You live around the corner. Yeah. Can you believe that? He's a he's, he's a tramier boy. Hey? He's a tramier looking at that beautiful hey? view out there. Amazing. All these, uh, yeah, ships yeah. that come oh, up and do on the main Best suburb, isn't it? Although no, yes, but you yes. wouldn't see it very often, would you? Sorry, you wouldn't no. see it very often, would you? Yeah. So obviously, all the racing is overseas in Europe. Yep. So I'm um, in. I'm um, at at home probably about three months of the year. Yeah. But yeah, it's always really nice to come back to home yeah, and absolutely. being over there. You know makes me appreciate how good Tasmania is, yeah. honestly. Yep. And it's nice just to come home, relax, see your friends, family. Yep. And yeah, go back to, you know, my other life, I guess. Yeah, fantastic. All right, we'll get on to that. Lenny, you want to start off? You've got a question here for him? Let's, oh, let's have, go. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, you know, I suppose one of the, the uh, questions most people get asked you is, uh, how long have you been racing for? So, first started when I was seven, and probably my devil definitely my dad got me into it so he used no, that's to do what got you involved yeah, yeah he used yeah. to do go-karting but i never yeah. actually say this but he used he did a uh, a test session yes. at monza in italy which is quite a famous yes. track in europe yeah. Yeah. um in a formula ford and the teacher the instructor there was roland ratzenberger okay. and i'm sure you have you heard of ayrton senna yeah, oh, definitely. Well, everyone, 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 definitely. Everyone, yeah, everyone, yeah. yeah so the weekend he died on the on the Saturday, Roland Ratzenberger died on, in a qualifying yeah. accident. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just a bit of interesting. That's his background. But, yeah, it started when I was seven. So, I think, what's that, 12 years yeah. I've been doing it. Yeah. And uh, when I first started, Dad said, look, I'll let you have a go in a go-kart if you do it for one year. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so he put you in the seat. You didn't ask to go in No, I asked. I, oh, I started are, asking, yeah. I think, yeah. since I was five. Yeah. And he... And he didn't, yeah, he, he knew what it could turn into, which is this. And obviously it's really expensive. Yeah. So I think that's why he said, look, just do it for you. Yeah, make sure, you, yeah. Yeah, just do, do it for you, 100%. Well, here you, we are now. In with that, did you play any other sports? Did you play soccer or? You know, bit of soccer, bit of, soccer. Bit of like uh, Milo cricket. Yeah, you know, a, bit of that cricket. Sort of a little bit of a game, but you, you have yeah, to Yeah, I don't know. I always just felt, yeah, most of was my thing. Yeah. And it was the only thing I really was good at the so yeah no, that's fantastic mate no, unbelievable. That's excellent. Unbelievable. Um, now just on um being overseas so you've just come back from spain yeah that's that's, that's where you've been 
Um, so you've spent some time over there before the season actually starts mm. setting up. And is that meeting the team as well, your new team that you're with? Or? Yeah, so a, a brand new team, Campos, this year, which is a Spanish team. Mm -hmm. And they've got a, a really, really good history and quite prestigious over there. The owner was an ex Formula One driver in the 80s. Yep. And now he's built up this team and they did they did well last year. Okay. And we're, we're all really happy to be racing with them. That was probably our best option this year. Yep. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So yep. yeah, we went there just to look at apartments and meet the team. And there was also a shakedown. So because it's a new car and everything, the team yep. gets one car. Okay. And just a day to check everything's right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, sorry, sorry. No, no, you're right. Are your family going to be there with you or you're on your own? My mum will be there for a month. Okay. Just to settle me in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mum. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, I'll be by myself. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. No, I was just going to say on, on, the, on the back of that, you know, obviously, you know, you've been racing since you were young and uh, obviously, um, I think we spoke just a little bit earlier about uh, your exercise regime for uh, keeping fit to be in the car. What do you do when you're down here or? When you're training, when yeah. you train and when, what do you do? Yeah, I think it's um, when people say I train, people, they, they think that they Car. mean just driving. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. when I say to my friends, oh, I can't come out because I'm training next day, they're like, oh, where are you driving? Yeah. Mm. I was like, mm. nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think because it's so high up that your physical um, form needs to be yeah. really on top of it. Yeah. You can't afford to be to lack, be lacking anywhere. Right. So um, yeah, six time, six days a week at the moment at Anytime Fitness in Sandy Bay. Okay. And they've been really good, so I've got to... So what, what, what were they called, man? Anytime Fitness. There you go, there you go. Fitness, Sandy, Sandy Bay. Bay. Yeah. Anytime hey, Fitness. Great so, gym. Get out there. Hey, so, uh, yeah. And uh, also, uh, just for the viewers that do or don't know, you're, fairly, you're pretty tall, mate. You know you're taller than me, mm. you're sitting there. Mm. How tall are you? 182 centimetres. 182, there you so, go. Uh, I think it's 5'11", but it's six, let's just say 6'4". Six six yeah. 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 yeah, it's only not 6 foot if it was in football terms. Yeah, wow. and wow. Why, why that's a problem is because we have to be, we have to be light yeah. to um, drive a car. I think last year was 71 kilos with yeah. kit, with helmet, and you know, the kit's about 4 kilos. Really? Okay. So but to drive, you need to put on muscle yep. just yes. to steer it, because just there's no power steering and you know, you get okay. wide, sticky tyres. Yeah. So just to steer, you need a lot of um, shoulder mm. muscle and things, but obviously muscle is weight. Mm. So it's just a compromise. That's why we do a lot of cardio. One of the questions yeah. I was going to ask you later on, I've got written down, um, and it's, it's to do with training. G-forces in, in these cars must be horrendous. I mean, great, horrendous. Yeah, yeah. So it's a great case, feeling. It'd be, it'd be unreal feeling. Yeah. But how does that affect the stresses in your body and stuff? It, and is that something you have to work out? To, yeah. If that's why you're working out, to, to yeah. combat the stresses of G-forces? Yeah, that's definitely part of it. I think through, through fast corners, like your neck, especially like long, fast corners, it just puts such a, a lot of pressure mm. on your neck. And I think the car this year will probably pull about three to three and a half G. Wow. Which is, yes. but then Formula One pulls six. Yeah, right. on. so, so it's, wow. you know, wow. it's light years away still, but yeah. yeah. Just, and just, just off that, you've, have you driven a Formula One car? No, you've had the chance to drive one? Not yet. Come on, guys, get out there. Yeah. You need to go. Working you know, on it. Hey, just a practice just run. Just yeah, sure. you, you show them up at any rate. Now, on, on yeah. the Formula One, so, um, we've we've got the, uh, the release of all the different um, times that you're racing and the tracks all over Europe. Um, but they've actually changed the format this year, so you're actually the prelude to the Formula One races. So you'll be supporting the Formula One races. Yeah, that's right. Um, what was I going to ask you? I was going to say I was going to ask you how that alignment works, but I think we've just discussed it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so. but yeah, basically what you said. So last year we only had one event with Formula One, yep. which was at which was at Monaco. Yeah. And this year, yeah, every round is with Formula One. So just from a driver's point of view, that's How cool really that? cool. You're in front of everyone. Exactly. Yeah. So if I can prove myself, you know, right there, yeah. you know, that it's hard for them not to see. That's unreal. So yeah. I guess it adds a bit more pressure, but it's definitely yeah. adds a cool factor to it. Yeah. So on the back of that, so the formula, so you, um, can you tell us a little bit about Formula 3? Yep. Mm. And uh, how fast are these cars going? Mm. Yeah, so it's a brand new series. Yep. which um, joined GP3, yes. which um, used to follow around Formula 1, and f form, uh, FIA F3, which I think last year Michael Schumacher's son won. Okay. So yeah, yeah two big series going to one. Yeah. So obviously oh, um, 10 teams had to to like buy their, their spot in the championship, so it's all the best teams, and it's basically 50 drivers trying to get into 30 seats. Wow. 
So it's super competitive this year, yeah. which is a good thing. Any so other Australians? You're the only you're only Australian. Australian. Yeah. 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 So yeah, but it's good if you can if if you can beat the best. You know. Yeah. Mm. Mate, and, and are the cars are the cars competitive in in speeds together? Like they're they're very similar, in, or they they're the they're the same miles apart. on on paper. Same engine, same amount of horsepower, same chassis. But obviously, motorsport, nothing's all the same. Yeah. You know, there's there's always faster parts, faster engines, and yeah. yeah, and but that that's how motorsport yeah. has always been, always will be. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, the cars are probably top speed around 280. 280. And three seconds, zero to 100. And yeah, they're about, they're probably on average about 15 seconds a lap slower than Formula One, which sounds a lot, well, but Formula One is just, yeah. yeah. So so that was my cool. next question, the so difference so between yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and Formula One, you've just answered. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. Yeah, yeah. and then, but then it's 15 seconds quicker than the cars I drove last year. Yeah. Okay. So, and yeah, it's 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 weird. Like then they're, they're not super powerful, but because of all the grip, well, 380 horsepower is still a, a little bit. Yeah. But like for for example, GT3 cars, which is like Ferrari, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. four five eights or something. Yeah. You know, we're going five seconds a lap quicker at least. So. Are you um, one of the younger guys? The, or, I mean, these guys that are driving the Formula Three and all, and whatnot are they basically your age? Are they younger, older? No, I mean, is it is it a mix? It's it's a bit of a mix, mix? but I'm probably around the average. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. maybe slightly on the younger side, but yeah, they're all around my age. Yeah, yeah. And there's they're a couple all... older guys that have been there for three years, which are probably 23, 24. Yeah, but... still trying to crack it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just um, I, 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 it's probably not technical, but when you go to a to a new track and especially in a new car, mm. um, how long does it take you roughly to sort of settle in and find breaking points and mm. things on a on a track? Is it like this, it comes to you straight away, a couple of laps, and you're settled in, or is it something that takes, you know, a weekend of practice on that track? Yeah. So on a weekend, we we don't get much track time at all, especially being on a Formula One weekend mm. because they're the priority. Mm. So learning a new track is just it's really paramount. So you need you know more than a session to learn a track, and it's it's too much. Yeah. 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 So to kind of counter that is we have simulators yeah. and the tracks are all laser scanned so they're exactly the same oh, okay. and yeah, the yeah. car model is exactly the same yeah so we spend a lot of time on the simulator beforehand right? wow to get used to the track and normally it's it's really close yeah and also i think being from tassie has helped me with learning tracks because from a young age i had to go to melbourne to yeah. race go-karting yeah or australia and yeah. then over to italy so Always, I just got used to learning a track on the yeah, Friday yeah, before yeah. the weekend. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's helped me now, in my career. Speaking of, of learning tracks, um, I've just got a couple of, for, from 2015 you were in Formula 4, yeah. um, 2016 you won the championships. Now what was that in your, it says here the single seat, seater championships in Europe, that, that's right? Yeah, that, that championship was called V to V. Yeah, and it was a French based championship we ran um, Raced all around Europe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, that was. So that would be the the booster of your career. That's where you've come from because you won the championship. Everyone stood up and, and watched after that. Yeah, partly. Yeah. It's um, it's a re you race the Formula Renault, which yeah. is what I raced last year. Yeah. But the top championship for the Formula Renault is Euro Cup. Yep. Which I raced last year and the year before. Yep. And just and below that is a VDV. But still, to win that was was really incredible. And then because I won that, I had a wild card event in the Euro Cup, yeah, which is yeah. the top level. Yeah. And um, I got on the podium, which later got reversed to fourth. But anyway, to get on the podium in in the wild card event was wow. really good. And that wow. kind of turned a couple of heads, which yeah. then led to a test, yeah. which then led to my seat next year. So for sure, it, it played a big part of my wow. career winning that championship. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then you won. At Monaco. Yeah. Now, a couple of years now, now. <laughs> as season travels here, I've got to ask the question: Is it Monaco or Monaco? I uh, say Monaco. I think David says Monaco though, and I always kind of cringe a bit. I was like, Monaco. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm a Monaco. Oh, are you? you yeah. look, you're probably the prince. <laughs> <laughs> probably the prince. So how was that getting up and having a win? And, and, and that is the most amazing stream. Uh, uh, yeah. The most amazing race around. Australia. Yeah. Whenever I feel but... down, I just feel about. I just remember that feeling, mm. and it makes me feel better. Mm. Uh, Qualifying was one of the best feelings I've had, yeah, because on a street track it's really hard to overtake. Yeah. So if you can qualify in pole, you have a very high chance of winning. Yeah. Yeah. So to get pole, the pressure before qualifying was huge, 
And in fact, I was late to the grid and a, and a Renault guy had to come with a scooter to pick me up and take me to the grid. But I think that helped. It's probably a lucky channel. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, and then, so just being on pole took the weight off my shoulders and I was really relaxed before the start and then to win. That is awesome. Yeah, it's um, awesome. Unreal. So, yeah, uh, what's, so what, what, what's your favourite track, though? No? Monaco. I can tick that off. It's already in the damn. Yeah. But, uh, it, it's, yeah. it's really far. It's a street circuit, but it's fast. Yeah. So when you're going around those fast corners right up against the walls, it's just a, it's a mega feeling. You what's really the, feel on the edge. What's, what's the noise like in the, in the tunnels? Uh, well, we wear, we wear like earplugs for the radio, yeah. so it's hard to you tell. A lot of people ask me about the lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But couldn't tell either. That was a bit disappointing. Cause they'll, yeah, I think they expect when you go in and come out, yeah, your eyes are like, oh, it's like you're getting that light there. Yeah. 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 But it through. wasn't, it was a bit sad. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Monaco's awesome. Yeah, so you have, uh, yeah, well, obviously you've, you've raced ma mainly on European tracks. You've yeah. raced just, yeah. have you anywhere yeah. else? Or was it just all being European? Have you done most of the tracks around? Yeah, Europe? most of the tracks, but never in Australia. No. Which is a bit, oh, really? a bit sad. Yeah. I think my first laps on, a, on an Australian Circa was two years ago in a Renault Megane wagon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. There you go. Wow. So there we go. So, um, any other tracks in Europe that you that you prefer to race on? That Spa, Saint yeah. Bichon. Yes, if you've heard of that yep. awesome track. So Eau Rouge, which is a fast left, right, up a hill. The first time I drove there, I can't. You come out of the pits and it's like a hairpin, and then there's a wall. Yeah and then the kink, and you can't really see past, you can't see our region until you go around that kink. Mm. And when I went around that kink and saw it, I was like, oh my God. Like, mm. I, was, I was like, no way, you can go up this. It's so steep. Wow. So yeah, Spa and another track called Mugello. Yeah. You think you guys in a MotoGP? Yes, yeah, so I do. Yeah, so yeah. Mugello is, that's crazy. I always say Mugello, but I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, that's yeah, my, my, ra my race to fame is just doing the Bathurst. In well, the, in the uh, in yeah, the highlights. Yeah, in the highlights yeah. <laughs> oh, you drove Bathurst. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, in the highlights. Yeah, we, uh, it was a joke actually. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was there a setup. Go. It was a setup, but it looked real. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> if you want to have a look at that episode, you can just see how I changed gears. Friday, frothy Bathurst. Uh, all right, Glenny, this is a lap around Mount Panorama in the Hilux Racing Ute. Go, go, go. All right, it's a big weekend of racing, 161 laps to get around the course. Takes about six hours, goes up over a steep mountain. Top speeds are 300 kilometers an hour. If I ever drive there, I'll ask you for tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Have you driven around it? It's I haven't. I've got it's some questions in here. Drive. <laughs> I, I, I am a massive Bathurst fan. I've, I've never missed a Bathurst since I, I can remember. I've, I always watched Bathurst. I and used to be bigger than yeah. early, in the early days. We, um, yeah, no. I've driven it a couple of times and it is just... We did it on a honeymoon. We did it on a honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most the trail, amazing the experience. And it's, it's the same thing. You just drive up it and it's like this. And you think, it's crazy. Wow, how do they do this? You know, and... It's a lot. It's always. I find it's always a lot tighter in real life. Mm. Than on the, oh, here's a big question I'm going to ask you. Okay. All right. Don't be shy. <laughs> We've talked you up. We said you're one of the greatest talents in, in Australia, maybe the world. What do you think your chances are of getting there, Formula One? I got asked this question not to, not too long ago, and the the guy that asked it said, "What out of ten is your chances of getting to Formula One?" Yeah. And I looked at David, <laughs> and I was like. I never got the last second before. I, I kind of went silent for a bit and said seven out of ten. That's that's high. So that's, six, six or a seven. That's high. That, yeah, you'll be right. And look, you got you got to be confident. You've, You've got to believe yeah. in yourself. Like we're we're on this journey because we believe we can make exactly. it. If we didn't think we could make yeah. it, we wouldn't be on it. You wouldn't be on it. And you know, yeah. it's it's about having that confidence. You've, you've you know? got to have that level. Otherwise, in all sport, mate, mm. you can have it. Mm. Uh, whether it's uh, you know you're playing. You know, professional soccer, football, mm. whatever. If you haven't got that, you what's well, an edge? You've you got, got to have the edge. Yeah, you've got to have the edge. It's like pilots uh, and planes. Yeah. The same. You have to believe in yourself for sure. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Alex Peroni, and I'll take you through a lap of Red Bull Ring in Spielberg. So, coming up to the first corner, third gear, braking as late as possible, and trying to get the the best exit because obviously we have this long straight where it's easy to gain and lose time. So at the moment, shifting up the gears, leaving it in six because we have this big uphill here. Looking for the breaking point between the 100 and the 50, shifting down to second. All the curb. And yeah, again, focusing on the exit because we have another straight. That's one of the most important things of this track because we have, you know, short radius corners and then long straights. 
coming up to turn three or I think and um, breaking under the gantry gear three bit of a lock up but managed to get it on the curb a very important minimum speed through there slowly bringing the car to the right for coming to the first left hand of the track Welcome back everyone, we just had a quick little break to uh, reset, reset the battery on the camera. Reset my battery side today. Yeah, well, oh, I need yeah. to. A little bit warm here in the flag today. Yeah. 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 It's all the questions there. Yeah. We, we, need a, uh, we need an air conditioning unit here. Hey, Alright, we're ready to rock. Yeah, Go again, uh, mate. Your biggest idol, mate, was there an idol mm. in racing? Mm. Yeah, uh, definitely Michael Schumacher. Michael but, Schumacher. And, and Senna, obviously. Yeah. Every yeah. driver says Senna, don't they? But yeah. Growing up, I watched Michael, so yeah. for me, it's a bit, it's a bit more relatable to be close. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't, didn't grow up watching Senna, yeah. but yeah, um, just the the values they have, and you know some of the quotes that Senna said and Michael, and they'll just do anything to win. I think mm -hmm. Michael in particular was renowned for that, mm -hmm. yeah. and just the amount of dedication and just willpower. You know, after f winning five championships in a row, he still mm -hmm. had that willpower to keep yeah. keep trying. But, but currently, probably Dan Danny Rick's hard to go by. And uh, uh, this is probably a bit of a controversy, but I love Max Verstappen as well. Okay, okay. No, really? No, that's all right. There we go. Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Whoa. Um, and Daniel Ricciardo, while we're on that subject, you, you've met him? Uh, yeah, so met him at Monaco yep. when I won. So if you win in any category on that weekend, you get to go to the Crown Prince's Bowl, oh, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. this huge yep. dinner celebration thing yeah, yeah. after on the <clears throat> Sunday. Yep. And obviously he won and I won. So uh, David said he was going to the toilet when actually he uh, tapped Daniel on the shoulder and said, oh, look, can you come and talk to this guy, Alex oh, Broner? Wow. And Daniel, apparently Daniel said, Oh, is he the guy? Is he the Aussie with the long hair? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then, yeah, he came over, tapped me on the shoulder, and I looked around and was like, starstruck. Don't yeah. change that, mate. Uh, you keep those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, Otherwise, you end up like me. Yeah. Well, yeah. It starts to retract. <laughs> yeah. Make a white, <laughs> white line, mate. Anyway, mate. No, keep that. Um, I've got a question here we've already pretty much covered, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, any interest in V8 supercars? And I know you're 100% focused on where you're going and, and everything, but uh, after. As you're getting older and, and looking at you know settling back into Australia, would that be something that you might contemplate? I think that yeah, the target is obviously Formula One, as yeah, you said absolutely. at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But definitely, you know, as as a backup plan, V8 supercars would be cool. Mm. And a, as a fan, I love V8 supercars. I love watching it. It's probably one of the most entertaining series to watch. Mm. Mm. And you know, I respect all the guys there. And you've never driven one of them. Never driven one. Only on the simulator. Guys. Give him a crack, will you? Yeah. Okay. But even we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can organise. Thanks. <laughs> In actual fact, I may have a V8 driver coming on the show very soon. So. Okay. Mm, I Is he Tasmanian? I won't say who. No. Okay. No. But anyway, we'll, anyway. we'll announce that later on. But yeah. yeah once once I've got it uh, all organised. So. Now you did mention that you have driven Bathurst after yeah. all, but in yeah. a simulator. Yeah, yeah. And you cracked out some pretty hot laps, yeah. Yeah, in the sim. <laughs> I yeah. think it was just we. I went to this this guy that had the sim um, to prepare for Abu Dhabi. Yeah. As I said, for a new track, it's very important to go on the sim yeah. just to try and learn it. Yeah. So we went there with that intention. But then, you know, after about an hour and a half, we're like, oh, let's have some fun. <laughs> so he put me on Bathurst in a V8 oh, supercar. Wow. Yeah. And super hard to drive, mm. really technical because mm. it's it's really heavy, the car. Yeah. So you can't just throw it in and just do what you want with it and no downfalls. Yeah. So it's a special technique, and after driving that, if it's anything like the sim, I have a lot of respect. Yeah, the yeah drivers. for the drivers, yeah. yeah. And um, I think, yeah. Yeah, they're doing an amazing job. You, anyone notice you, mate? Yeah, when you're walking, what about yeah. in Europe? Yeah, they start saying, is that... That's, yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone that <laughs> I've... Start, <laughs> I know the girls would be chasing you around. Nah, like, but Glenn, like, everyone, like, everyone that I've mentioned to about the Friday Frothy, I'm going around saying, well, hey, we're getting Alex Peroni, Alex Peroni. Do you know Alex Peroni? And everyone say, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah really? you know, oh, they, you're, know, you're well known right here. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, not, not really yet. Well, I'm just walking down the street and people will recognise yeah, me. It'll only take five seconds when they. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, that will happen to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we started this show and that's the end of play. Yeah. 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 That's the dive for the frothy show. Oh, how, how embarrassing. How embarrassing. Um, Did you get a photo with you? No. Uh, no. For we'll get one with you. Okay. <laughs> um, now, what's what's a normal week for Alex Perry? So, so exactly. You know, we, we've already spoken about your weights and what you do. It's like yep. six days a week in, in weights. Um, uh, practicing? Do you get to get in a car and practice at all, or no. is it just all simulating? And also your diet. How do you eat? Yeah. So, 
really this year we'll focus a lot on diet, especially now the personal trainer. So on a strict diet where, you know, it's a lot of carbs and a lot of protein and really not much fat or anything like that, just to, just to keep my weight down. Yeah. And yeah, in terms of my day to day, it's just waking up, going to the gym in the morning and then maybe something in the afternoon, and a bit of neck training. Yeah. And then, yeah, try and hang out with friends when I can. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's important. Well, it's the, important. For the mental health. And it keeps us all grounded. I was going to yeah. say, and you'd be so limited with the time that you actually spend yeah. with them, wouldn't you? Because you're always yeah. away. We, so we, we spend a bit of time with yeah. you. Uh, you and I? Yeah. We'd leave it here, don't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a bit of a tough one, actually. How, how hard is it growing up as a professional driver? Do you feel you've missed out on anything, being so busy? Or are you blessed to be traveling the world and doing what you do? Definitely. Doing what you love. Yeah. 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 Um, it's as I said, it's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. Yeah. So yeah. be doing that, you know, all year is just awesome. Yeah. So, so that, it, it makes up for being away from home and away from friends. Yeah. And family. Definitely. What you're doing and what you love is. Yeah. I think the first year was the hardest being away, and but it, even still, I definitely still miss family and friends and just yeah. just home and just my life when I'm here. Yeah. And that's hard, but you know when you get to the track on the race weekend you forget about it yeah I think I think growing up honestly the hardest thing it's a bit it's a bit I don't know it's down a bit but like uh, being a driver mm. no, not many people can relate to it so when I when I'd say like I can't come to school because I'm driving you mm. know people just be like what oh you're driving your billy card you know exactly <laughs> right or and no uh, yeah none of my friends could relate to it and then they'll be like yo why have you got a Facebook page or why have you got this why are you doing this uh, but this is this is a while back, and yeah, it's not like you know being an AFL player where everyone here can relate. But yes. um, that was kind of yeah. tough at first. Yeah, it's probably, like probably used more to of a. I suppose it's more of an individual uh, sport, isn't it? With racing, you've got your yeah. team, more well, yourself and your and team. Your manager right? I fully and understand and, it. And, 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 and everything else. Whereas yeah. team sports is a little bit different. But mm. this yeah, is yeah. a. Yeah, this is like a golfer. Mm, you? You're yeah, basically yeah. like a golfer. You're going out there. You, it's it's uh, train, 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 mm. and uh, mm. you know yeah. you, you you get your feedback from your from your lap times and everything else. And yeah, uh, yeah so with, with you um, also your downtime when you do come back, what do you do? Uh, do you think racing like twenty four seven or do you? You go out with mum and dad when you come back, or you, just your mates when you get back to Tassie, or yeah. I mean, apart from the training, of course, which mm. we've spoken about. Yeah, it definitely takes me a while to switch off. Yeah, especially coming back from a uh, from the season. I think it takes me, you know, a couple of weeks. To, but then after that, I really yeah. just I'm quite chill out. Yeah, yeah, chill out and just forget about it because yeah. it really does take it out of you. You really, when I come back to Tassie, I really just feel like. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's probably a, not a bad place to come back. It's still probably it's the, the best laid back place it's the best, in yeah. the world. Probably mm -hmm. That's really good for that. Now, guys, Sorry, was on the islands. Right? Yeah, 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 that was a right right cruise. Um, let's let's get serious about this and start okay. talking expenses. Okay. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, guys, that um, Alex is out there doing what he loves and doing a fantastic job. Um, doing it for for. Do you want me to hold this up in a minute? Well, yeah, yeah, for sure. So you, we'll, you, you keep we'll. going, and I'll uh, I'll hold that up in a second. And, uh, and I was absolutely blown away when I found out that you know, and and David was saying that you know you constantly have to tell people we don't get paid, we don't get paid. You know, you're you're basically sponsors and and people who are donating money, which hopefully you guys are going to help out there. Um, even if you win a race, you don't get any financial. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit weird. That's hard. Like the only thing we get is a trophy. Well, only thing. It's quite good. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trophy, uh, Michelin cap because they provide the tires, yeah. and uh, a bottle of nice champagne, okay. which end up spraying everywhere anyway. So yeah, okay. wow. Uh, you got Blunston, Blunston yeah. boots. Yeah. So this all started in about 2016, yep. where um, from a family we couldn't fund it anymore. Yep. And that's when David came into play. Yep. And yeah, we we had these amazing sponsorships from oh, yeah. since then. From Blunston, RSCT, and Richardson Divine Marine, they've been the main ones. Yep, yep. And so yeah, they've yeah really kickstarted everything. So Richard Richardson Divine Marine, they're the guys that actually build the, the motorboats yeah, and, and they're doing the ferries for, for the Bruni Island yep. ferry. So if you're not from Tasmania, that's um one of our islands down here. So we'll, we'll go through that again, mate. So we've got RSCT, we've got uh, Blunston Blunston Boots, that is. What else we got there? Uh, um, RDM. Uh, oh, and these are just the championship they're just sponsors. the championship sponsors. Yeah. So without without sponsors, you, you but they're light. This is a light, very light suit, isn't it? Mm, yeah. So, uh, yeah, quite yeah. nice. Yeah. And 
I'll, I'll get to it in a minute, but there is a fundraiser coming up uh, next Friday, isn't it? That's next it. Friday night? Yep. Um, and that suit will be up for, for auction? Yeah. As long as, as well as other things that uh, that are going to come on for for auction. You're right there, Glennie? Yeah. Right. Well done. You're, you're, you're well, back you're, in the, you're back the, in the back in the suit. You're the Elise Platt of the Friday. <laughs> right? Right? What was that? What was that game show called? Oh, oh my God, Sala that's Century. Made on Sala 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 Century. Yeah. Sala 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 so, yeah, funding is so important <laughs> for you guys. Yeah, so, it's, so important. It's, it's paramount. Yeah, as you said, yeah. Well, I don't think we have said, but yeah, you don't get paid until Formula One. You yeah. get single seaters. Yeah. So That's yeah, unreal. partly, well, to to race you have to you have to raise the funds, yeah. and that comes from sponsors and yeah. donors and yeah. investors and things like that. Yeah. Now, you guys have set up a separate business to to, to fundraise to try and get you money to, to do this, and uh, we'll put a link on below yeah. um, mm -hmm. of how you can get a make a, a tax deductible um, donation. Uh, whether it's ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, get on board, guys, because uh, we need to support you. Well, we need we need to get well, you there. What, what, what we need, you know, you know how I'm asking for sponsors all the time. Yes, you think it's funny we're in the frothy bar. Mm. But come on, I've been telling you, United, no. United <laughs> Brewery, no, United Brewery. <laughs> there it is, United Brewery. Get behind this guy. But seriously, Glenn, if, if well, you're out, sport, if you're out there and you've got a come business on. and you want to donate some money, you know. Get, get behind this guy. Yeah, yeah. We need to help. And especially people in Tasmania. He's out there wearing Tasmania on his car. Look, I don't think it's... Um, I think we could always say that uh, anyone around Australia and that, not just here. No, no. So, anyway, Carl, put your hand in your pocket. It doesn't matter how small it is. And exactly. I'm telling you now, I'm putting it out there. I'm going to spread this across the eastern shore of Tasmania. Get on board. I expect everyone to pitch in. 10, 50, 100, whatever it is, whatever you can afford. Well, Let's get this uh, guy Formula on. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it is really true though. Any anything helps, and just even people commenting on when I do a po when I win or oh, saying absolutely. well done, Alex. You know that's awesome. That, perhaps that's I'll lose some weight, mate. I might do a run from Launceston to Dover. Mm. That's a long run. That'd be fun. <laughs> I'd probably, probably have to get in the car and have now, a little bit of a rest on the way through. We're running out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. It's just been, no, thank you. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Now, let, just next week we've said it. Uh, we'll also put details up on on the screen. So it's next Friday night. That's it. It's yeah. at yeah. the Italian Club. Yep. It's a farewell dinner and fundraiser. Yep. The cost is sixty dollars for a three course meal, which is cheap. I, I can't believe that. Should, That's cheap as chips here. Anyway, so sixty dollars, <laughs> three course meal. Um, we're certainly going to be there. You're certainly going to be there. Yeah. Um, uh, will you be there, being able to sign some autographs and take photos of people? Yeah. And things, so yeah. People, people do anything. Yeah. So the details will be on. Guys, get on board. Sixty dollars for a three course meal and a fundraiser. There's, there's gonna be auctions going on. Get the chance to meet Alex. Get the chance to meet Glenn. Oh. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, get on the details, email through, book a table. Tables between eight and 12? I think so. Eight yeah, 12. that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, so, so we'll, we'll definitely be there anyway. So, uh, and just quickly, before we finish there, when does the season actually start? When do you, when do you have to head back over? Yeah, it starts in, well, I head over on March 16th. And okay. so, oh, but the season actually, as in racing, starts in May. Yeah. Okay. So, but there's a lot of testing before then, so I'll be kept busy. Yeah. So you'll you'll leave in two weeks. That's it. Two, two just over two. I think. Yeah. So or you're fair dinner next week, and then you're off the week after. That's it. Wow. Yep. Okay. Wow. 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 Well, I don't know. I'd like to. Yeah, we'd like to thank Dave, and well, you know, just before you do, we will. But um, it's one here. We just missed. Are your races going to be televised? Yeah. How, yeah. do, how do we keep yeah, up? Yeah. We want. We'll, we're going to follow your progress, and, and we'll, we'll keep plugging away. So they will be te televised, but on pay TV on Fox. Yeah, on yeah. Fox. Yeah, on, on Fox. Fox. Yeah. So yeah, I think Fox yeah. does V8 supercars as well. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, we'll and yeah. yeah, I think the races, and I think even qualifying will be televised. So oh, wow. I don't know how good the time, the time will be with the time difference and stuff. But yeah, 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 yeah. we'll be on that. That is great. Well, Fox should be pushing it, shouldn't it? Well, all the mm. sports they do, mm. all the motor sports, and this is mm. Formula One. As, as far as I'm concerned, as I said, we'll we'll uh, we'll keep up to date. We've we've had a couple of people come on now, and we're sort of following their career as well. So we're going to follow yours as well, and um, very closely. Yeah, and we'll keep everyone updated with mm. uh, with how you're going and, and where you're Cheers. at. And hopefully, we can raise some funds for you to keep you going. Yeah, so we will. get we on will. board, Hobart, Tasmania, Australia, everyone, yeah, get on board. Australia. 
no, David, no, Tasmania. Thank thanks you so much yeah, uh, for allowing Alex to come on tonight. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> fantastic. What are you laughing thanks, at? Thanks, David. Thanks, hey? Dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, mate, yeah, it's an absolute thanks, pleasure. Thanks, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, well, I'll say it again, mate. We uh, very lucky to have him on. And, mm. Uh, mm. Now, for anyone that, uh, you know, uh, follows Formula One or any motor racing, this is it's an important thing now to uh, to start remembering the name. Peroni. Just remember that name. The, the Don't beer. worry about the other names. Peroni. That's it. Peroni. That's, That's it. it. That's all you need Thank to do. You. Thank you so Thanks, much, mate. Thanks, Thanks mate. Good, good luck with Cheers. All the best. Thanks, guys. See ya. Cheers.